just like a, a computer. It stores all this information. And you're yes. thinking you forgot about it. No, it's still buried deep down embedded in your subconscious mind and thoughts and in your heart. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall indeed rejoice and be glad in it. Praise be to God. God is a sovereign God. He's our Lord and Savior. We just trust in the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hallelujah. This morning, I have my beautiful wife, First Lady Misha, right beside me here, and I'm truly grateful, yes, that she's here with me this morning to share and to have this sweet fellowship in the beauty of holiness. Praise be to God. Yes, I thank God that he has been absolutely awesome in our lives, and God has called us to the ministry and the ministry of deliverance. Praise be to God. God has also called me to be an author. And I have written two beautiful books. And these books, the first one is The Third Dimensional Man. Praise be to God. Christ, the Anointed One. And I can rest assured that this book is not written out of my own knowledge and understanding. This book is truly inspired by God. Why do I say this? Because the contents in this book, me of myself, can never do it. Only through the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Someone would ask and say, how can you compare your book with the Bible? But what I should say to you, if you're going to do anything that is of God, and is not inspired by the Spirit of God. It is useless. And it doesn't make sense to even try to bring it to the, to the forefront and to introduce it as a book of God and a book of faith. Your books are whatsoever you do must be inspired by God in order to be effective and represents the values and the anointing of the word. So praise be to God. So this book, The Third Dimensional Man, Christ the Anointed One, it has so many things in it that will uplift, build you up, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, messages to give you counsel and guidance to empower you on this journey in life. I do hope that you will shop and get this book. The third dimensional man, Christ, the anointed one. Praise be to God. And my second book here is The Landmine in Our Spiritual Journey. This book is exactly what the name is. The Landmines in Our Spiritual Journey. Many of us are on a journey in the Lord. We encounter so many different things in life. And some of the things that we do face, they are really challenging. Praise be to God. And the only way you can overcome some of the plots and the plans that Satan has placed before us is to have a clear understanding in God. How to overcome the battle that is launched before you. We have to understand that Satan and his minions, they have been around for thousands of years. They understand us more than we even understand ourselves. So we need to have a clear knowledge and understanding of to overcome the challenges that before us. This book is inspired by God. It teaches you how to overcome these spiritual landmines. Praise be to God. So I will use these videos to really share with you about these books. And also, these, this landmine in, this, in our spiritual journey, we also have it on audio. You can listen to this audio in your car while you're sleeping. You can listen to this audio while you're at the breakfast table, having your lunch and your dinner. You can listen to this audio. And when you start listening to this audio, believe me, you won't put it down. Because there is so much in it that identify with your life, identify with the lives of people around you, identify with some of the challenges that you face, face each and every day and also give you an awareness about 
God. And it also gives you an understanding about the darkness that comes against us that want to infiltrate, invade, disrupt our life. So these books are truly amazing book. My wife and myself will be talking about various different chapters in this book before you can have a clear understanding <clears throat> of the contents in this book that you can you can know what you're buying that you can have an understanding that this is not something that is a religious book the contents in this book say they are they are spiritual they are deep and you have to you have to search for yourself the scripture to verify that what you're reading what you're hearing is truly of god i advise everyone to do such thing before they start to criticize or find fault verify the word of god for yourself yes. praise be to god so my wife will be sharing with <laughs> you a, a, a topic and she will talk about the topic and any questions that need to be answered associated with the book i'll be free to answer this question praise be to god so we will be looking at um what makes us vulnerable and I put it in the hands of my dear wife. Let she do what she needs to do and do it best. Amen. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Rasayda Michelle Barham. But basically, we are going to go look at chapter 17. The title of the chapter is What Makes Us Vulnerable. But we are going to focus on the part in the chapter which talks about trauma makes you vulnerable. Trauma. What is trauma? Well, basically, um, it's a traumatic experience that you may have gone through in the past or just recently, and it leaves you shaken emotionally, internally, and sometimes you may not recognize it or accept it to be so, and a lot of people walk around thinking that, oh, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm okay, but they're not. They're suffering internal trauma, they're going through trauma as they live their daily lives, and they're trying to mask it and mask the pain with whatever they choose to do that seems like it's giving them comfort and is the solution to the problem. So that's part of the chapter here in the Landmines in Our Spiritual Journey, the book here. In this area of the chapter, I'm just going to read the section here which focuses on trauma, what makes you vulnerable. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall, we're reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. This is quoted in the book. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, and men should fear before him. Okay, it says here, everything associated with your life experiences, good or bad, God knows. Develop the practice of training your mind to think positively despite an outcome. Yes. Um, that's a very interesting, um, you know, knowledge to use on a daily basis. Just to understand that everything concerning your life, God knows about it. The difficult, th the difficult things that you face in life is never meant to hurt or to harm, but to build you up. Why? Knowledge teaches wisdom. Experience teaches wisdom. The more experience you gain, this is how you are able to become, to, to gain wisdom in your day-to-day -day encounters. And not only that, it is dear also to help you shape the life of others who are going through similar things. And because you have gone through it in your own experience, you can be able to shape someone else's life and teach them how you can overcome various different situations in their lives. Glory be to God. So I will continue reading here. It says, stand from on your renewed conviction, Jesus Christ is Lord. To believe that you can overcome the obstacles placed before you. You can overcome the painful circumstances that remind you of your disturbing past misfortunes that keep playing the horrible images of the tragedies that cause your suffering. So 
that part is very profound. You see, <laughs> the mind is a powerful thing. And um, the heart plays a very vital part in all of that too, because it says, um, in the word of God, it says, guard your heart. And if you guard your heart, it's all diligence, because out of it becomes the issues of life. So, you know, when all of this stuff we see and we hear and we experience these traumatic events, and when the heart is being touched by all of this, and not only that, it, it affects the mind. So the connection between the heart and the mind, and then it starts to replay, because the mind is just like a, a computer. It stores all this information, and you're yes. thinking you forgot about it. No, it's still buried deep down, embedded in your subconscious mind and thoughts and in your heart. And another thing, you know, when you talk about the mind, the mind, yes, is, a, is like a computer that stores information. So at times, the mind truly needs to be reset. How do you reset your mind? The Bible says that you must renew your mind to the Word of God and to the mind of Christ. That means you basically need to continuously reading the Word of God and meditating on the Word of God. The, everything that you practice, you will be perfected. Yes, if you practice telling lies, lies will shape you. If you're being honest and truthful, that's who you're going to be. So your mind basically will operate based upon what it is, what is implanted or embedded in your subconscious person. This is why the enemy is able to influence our mind at times to do things that is contrary to, to your values and your belief. Because if you have a passive mind and your mind is not active in the word of God, in praying and worshiping and trusting and hoping in God, then you will develop a passive mind that you don't know what to believe and cannot be able to justify the, the, the things that are happening around you and you will be easily influenced by these evil demonic forces that want to put you in bondage and have you in captive. Praise be to God for the word of God. Amen. And as I continue reading here in where it says uh, the subtitle, Trauma Makes You Vulnerable, it says here, but with faith and determination, you can break away from Satan's control, desired schemes to keep you chained up in your brokenness. See? And trauma makes you vulnerable causes you to doubt, yes. is a symbol of weakness. Trauma makes you question yourself and suppress your confidence that you can do so that you can do remarkable things. God will not bless skepticism. No positive changes can occur in the life of a person who questions everything and has no desire for the truth. They will continue to live in torment with their painful problems. So see... <laughs> In facing, in facing the truth, it's very yes. important when dealing with trauma because we, if we live in denial, thinking that we're not traumatized or whatever bad situation occurs is not affecting us, then we don't, we're only hurting ourselves because a lot of people walk around with trauma for years, years and years. It's buried and it's seeping down, deep down inside them and they suffer through this trauma. But until they see for what it is and recognize it and accept it, then they will continue to suffer. It's, for example, if a person is an alcoholic, until that person speak out of their own mouth and recognize it and accept and say, I am an alcoholic, that is when he made a decision that something is wrong and that going forward, he realized that yes, he's an alcoholic and yes, he's going to seek help and he has to go to AAA, to seek counsel or seek acceptance with others who are recover who are trying to recover from being an alcoholic. Because until he, that person accepts that he's an alcoholic, he's gonna continue to drink himself or herself to death. Yes. And that's that is very traumatic because you see, he will be drinking himself to death for years before accepting that he's suffering from trauma. Because you see every action gets a reaction every action gets a reaction this person may have suffered in your child past or in your adult life a traumatic event that has led them to 
to drink. Some people use different ways to, to overcome trauma. Some people use alcohol. You know, some people use listening to different types of music. It was to think that, oh yes, they immerse themselves into some music to drown out the thoughts, the emotions that, yeah. you know, keep the, the trauma playing in their mind over and over. So, you know, it's many different ways of denying the fact that they are going through trauma. But until you accept that this is a problem, this is a situation that's affecting me and the trauma is affecting my life and the people around me, not only not this is only when they will be delivered begin the process of beginning to be delivered from the satanic stronghold so let me let me expound on this trauma displays your true personality whenever you are you have encountered into an accident or anything that is traumatic no matter how severe or mild it may be it displaces your true personality and at that moment your your mind can be invaded by evil spirit if you should look back on many things that is in your life that traumatizes you you'll realize that you develop fear restlessness and unhealthy sleeping habits because it opens the door for evil spirit to invade your lives now, what are you going to do when you become traumatized, when you are mental abused, physical abused, raped, or so many different things, or meeting an accident? What can you do? You have to basically change your life around by getting into the word of God. So associate yourself with positive, uplifting people. Play positive music that will basically inspire you to gain confidence once more in yourself if you begin if you allow yourself to continuously dwell in the traumatic events or these memories keep on coming back you will be affected by these evil spirit and believe me it will transform your life you will become very resentful afraid and you will at times want to want to go get angry at people and even at yourself blaming yourself for the things that you're not responsible for so this book the landmine in our spiritual journey it opens the door for you to understand your true self understand how to overcome the many different obstacles in your life because when you have a clear understanding of who you are, you value yourself, you appreciate yourself, you will be able to appreciate others. You will be able to appreciate your faith in God and it builds confidence and self-esteem and you will walk in boldness and walk by faith. Trust me. So whenever you are being traumatized, very important that you stay in the word of God, you pray, you associate with people that can lift you up out of a situation. Never find yourself going around people who are negative, who will never speak positive words in their life and in your life and also praising God and giving him the glory in every situation. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, it continues here to say, a traumatized person will resort to lies and deception to get instant results to feel good at the moment, but it will turn out to be disastrous eventually and complicate their already first fractured life. As I was saying earlier, I mean, they will use something, whether it be drinking too much alcohol um, yes. or involving in... in negative stuff that's not worthy you know or wholesome and then they think okay it's just a t that is just a, a quick fix really it doesn't solve the problem it doesn't get rid of the trauma those people need spiritual deliverance they do you do need spiritual we all need spiritual deliverance for for trauma if we ever experience it even for for car accidents you know because uh, the memory is embedded in us because the mind remembers and stores information you could remember stuff 
from way back when you were five years old, even if you're 50 years old, for something might just pop up and happen that's a very similar incident. And all of a sudden, the memory that was drawn out for years and you never remembered about it, all of a sudden, it just pops up in your mind. So the brain is like, uh, you know, the CPU of the computer. It stores all the information yeah. there. All the information there. Sometimes the good ones will, you know, resurface more often based on how you are living and what's happening in your life. The negative ones may stay seeping and embedded into you for years and not come up into your memory until circumstances or trauma happens and it just pops up right there. So it's good to understand and recognize and accept if you are being traumatized because that's the only way you can begin to heal and get delivered and set free. When trauma. you are being traumatized, it's best to be very open and honest with yourself. Open and honest with others. Open and honest with God. The more you're open and being honest, this is how you can overcome the internal pain and hurt. Because many times people are traumatized, they tend to blame themselves and they are looking on the what if how they could have lived their life totally different to avoid the event, this event from happening. And most of the time they, they really blame themselves. And if not, they are not blaming themselves, they are blaming others or blaming God. But that doesn't do anything good for the kind of situation that they are in. It's best you just call out to God and say, Lord, I need deliverance. I need a fix. I need for you to touch my life. Reach out to the one who you trust and love and have a talk, communicating your feelings to them. This is how you would overcome by talking. Talking and sharing is internal deliverance, like crying. When you're able to express that deep pain and hurt without allowing it to become a bottleneck up in your heart and to fester and grow into something more. When you share it, reveal your feelings. If you can't talk to someone, talk to God. Explain to him. Talk to him as if you're talking to someone who you love and close to. And before long, God will come through for you. God will open doors that or send someone in your life to help you to overcome. Never go into hiding or begin to resent and resist and think that nobody knows what you're going through. Nobody understand my pain. Don't begin to make judgment concerning others or judgment concerning yourself. You need to realize that being traumatized is something that has going on for years. Many people are familiar with this type of stuff. And God knows everything that you're going through. Not only God, but the devil watches you want to use your vulnerabilities, want to use your weakness as a tool for attack and affliction. Not only do he want to hurt you. But you want to use you to hurt someone else or use someone else to hurt you to bring more pain in your life. But God wants to see you through. He wants to heal, deliver, and set you free. Praise be to God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, you know, trauma is something that... Um, as my husband just mentioned, it will fester. Yes. Because <laughs> you see, we can show a smile on the outside. We can smile. We can, you know, clap our hands. We can be joyful. And that's just an outward thing, you know. But what is happening in the inside of us? What is happening on the inside? That is what is the most important. Not what people are seeing from the outside appearance, but what is happening inside of yes. you. The person who's been affected by trauma, the person who in their quiet moments by themselves is suffering internally when their thoughts are just 
a, a, a mess because of this trauma situation that keeps repeating itself in their minds and um, they're they, it's repeating in their heads continually every day now and then you know because once you're doing stuff if you're drinking you know, you're doing something to cover it up if you're, if you're if you're drunk but once you get over being intoxicated you know, you come back to yourself here it is again the thoughts are repeating yes. itself you know so it's a temporary fix so when you're in your quiet moment without covering it up through alcohol or music or whatever thing you're doing at the time to just drown out those thoughts but when you come back to your true self and you sit down and hear your and you can hear your thoughts and if you be true to yourself and you come before god and say lord i need thee i need thee oh lord i need thee i cannot do this on my own i need deliverance you have to come to the accepting point where you say lord i need help deliver me help me send help wherever you know and once you cry out to god he will hear you your Abba Father cares about you. He understands before you open your mouth. He knows the situation. He knows everything about you. Every hair on your head, he knows. Every thought you thought, he knows. So he's just waiting on you to come and say, Lord, help me. And once you open up your mouth and say, Lord, help me, he's there for you every step of the way. He will send help. He will ca cause you to call the person you're supposed to talk to and uh, whoever is supposed to get help to you he will connect you to the person whether it be the person who's calling you is going to get some help through another person but he's going to send help and you're going to get the help once you cry to the lord and say yes lord i need a deliverance i need help from this trauma it's hurting me it's destroying my soul seek help don't deny a situation if you are being traumatized if, don't be ashamed. Everyone goes through stuff in life. Good or bad or ugly or indifferent. It's life. Once we're living here yes. on this earth, life happens. Sometimes we least expect things to happen. It just shows up unexpectedly. The phone rings. The door is knocked on. Or we're just out minding our own business and something happens. So just as long as we serve him seek his face have a relationship with our lord jesus christ because he wants us to have a relationship with him it's not about just being a christian and going to church and all of that but he he wants us to develop fellowship with him so seek your father seek your father seek your heavenly father's help when you're traumatized seek him and he's there to help you to heal you to cure you to make you whole again in Jesus name amen I can really encourage and advise you that you need to get a copy of these books the third dimensional man and the landmines in our spiritual journey these books will be a blessing in your life mm -hmm. trust me it will empower you it will open up your eyes. We have, I have words of wisdom counseling in this book. Also prophetic words. So many things is in this book. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I'm not ashamed to let you know it is truly inspired by God. Without God, I could never be able to put these books together. So I give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And make sure... You go ahead and get your copy. We'll be sharing with you on many different occasions and times um, the contents in these books and share with you our Bible study and many other good things that God has placed in our heart. To be there with you, to share with you, fellowship with you, pray with you, believe with you, and stand with you in faith, by faith, because what? The just shall live.